Hello, my name is Linnea, and the this purpose of this screencast is to review the Pearl Trees educational tool. And in order to review the educational tool, we are going to look at the instructional design core tool set that the Academic Innovations and E-Learning Department at the University of Alaska Anchorage developed. So I'm going to talk about this instructional design tool set project first in order to, to identify why we decided to use pearl trees. And then through that process, I'll also talk about some key terms that are important to know within pearl trees, some of its organizational features, and some of its disadvantages. So let's begin. So the purpose of the core tool set within the um, Academic Innovations and E-Learning Department was to help the staff in this department curate resources that will help them better use educational tools that the department supports. In particular, we were looking at trying to curate tools related to actually how to use the tool, how to troubleshoot the tool, and some best practices for the tool. And in this process of trying to figure out how to curate some tools, we came upon the Pearl Trees platform. Now, Pearl Trees is a content curation platform similar in many ways to Pinterest. However, there are some key differences. The first of which is the terminology. On Pinterest, you have what is called a board. Meanwhile, in Pearl Trees, you have something that's called a collection. So within our department, we created the instructional design tool set educational technology and higher education collection. Then individual pins, as it is referred to in Pinterest, or individual links to outside websites, pictures, so on, are referred to within Pearl Trees as pearls. So those are two kind of key differences in terminology between <coughs> Pinterest and Pearl Trees. First of which is that um, pins are called pearls and boards are called collections. There's also some key differences in terms of organizational features, the first of which is that Pearl Trees allows for a hierarchical structure, meaning that you can embed collections within collections. So within the instructional design tool set, we have here a overall collection, but then we also have a series of, of um, about 11 different collections relating to the two different categories of tools that we support. Then within each of these categories of tools, for instance productivity tools, we have additional collections. Some of these collections even go even further. For instance, Google Apps for Education here has in even further collections within it related to the particular types of tools that are within Google Apps for Education. So as you can see, the nice thing about Pearl Trees is that you can embed collections and within collections, and this can really help create a real seamless platform where it's clear how information is relevant to one another. Now, another um, nice organizational feature that Pearl Trees provides is um, section headings. So, if we look here at Ever Evernote, you can see here that we have actually four section headings here. We have tool mastery, so this is consistent with our goal of identifying the types of um, resources that will help us know how to use the tool. Then we have troubleshooting, so tool, so resources that help us troubleshoot the tool. Best practices, so resources related to best practices, and exemplars. And we don't have any exemplars here, but these are just great exemplary uses of the tool within educational context. So as you can see here, that even at the very page level um, view where we have all these different pearls, Pearl Trees allows for you to do some really nice organizational um, strategies here, which, which is very helpful. Another thing that is um, really nice about Pearl Trees is that, like Pinterest and a lot of other new communication technologies that are about right now, it also is a social tool, meaning that you can connect with others on Pearl Trees. So up here we have my interests and basically this is, let me click on this, these are other 
collections, and occasionally it will be um, pearls as well, but other collections that seem to be relevant to the collections that I am curating on my own individual account. So for instance here, as I click and look through, I can see that putting the U in YouTube is very relevant to my educational tool of the YouTube platform. So I can add this collection to my own account by clicking on add this collection and then YouTube is under multimedia so I click on that then I can go back to my account and I'll go here to multimedia and I have this this is putting the U in YouTube well yes it's under multimedia but actually it is under YouTube so I'm going to Put embed it within, if I can get it here, YouTube. There I go. So as I go to YouTube here, this collection relates a lot to kind of best practices for using YouTube within educational contexts. So I'm going to move it. Oops. Go back. Oops. As you can see here, some some of these platforms here are a little can be a little confusing. Okay, here I am again. I'm going to put this under here under best practices. So as you can see, you can curate from other people's information, which is really nice, a nice feature that Pearl Trees enables. And another really nice feature too is the fact that you can collaborate with other people on a on a collection other Pearl Trees users so that's a really nice feature that one can use in the classroom now there are a couple disadvantages to Pearl Trees the first of which is that it is a freemium service so unlike Pinterest Pearl Trees has basic features that are available for free but to get additional features you need to pay a monthly subscription so one feature is that you that you do not receive with the free um, subscription is the fact that you do have advertisements. So as you can see over here, I have ads on my free account. Another is that I cannot make any of these collections private. In other words, anyone within Pearl Trees can search for any of the information that I put on here. And that actually could be a real disadvantage within educational context. But Despite these disadvantages, we have found that this tool is really useful within, uh, for our purposes of curating resources relating to educational technologies. And I suspect that you too, as an instructor or student, may find this tool to be useful in your own endeavors as well. Thanks.